Hi, STAT students. Welcome back. Let's finish up Section 7.1. So 7.1a was all about writing confidence intervals. That was kind of a big idea and finding z of alpha over 2. 7.1b is a short one because all we're going to do is find sample size. So it's going to ask exactly like the notes say, how large a sample is necessary for blah, 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 right? So really, how large of a sample do we need for that margin of error to still include our population parameter? So remember, E is equal to our margin of error. We know how to find a Z of alpha over 2. That's still the same. We have to jump into our Z table. We know standard deviation. Notice population standard deviation is known and square root of n. Now, this is the formula that we have been using to find our margin of error. Well, all we need to do is a little bit of algebra. Let's solve this for n. So it seems to me if I'm going to solve for n, the first thing I should do is get rid of that fraction that has a square root of n. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of n on both sides. So e times the square root of n is equal to our z of alpha over 2 times sigma, right? Because these guys cancel out. So then if I'm still solving for n, I feel like I should divide by margin of error. So square root of n is equal to z of our alpha over 2 times sigma all over e. And then we know the last step. If we've got a square root of n, we're going to square everything. So our final answer will look something like n is equal to giant squared. I forgot to write the squared up there, huh? Of z of alpha over 2 times our sigma, all divided by margin of error. So final formula. So if it ever says how large a sample is needed, then we've got that. So note to self, always round up, just like when we find our class width when we're making a frequency table, just like we um, do when we're in between two values on the Z table, we're going to always round up. If it's 108.1 items are needed in our sample, we're going to go up to 102. So always round up. So that formula is the big idea from Section 71B. So let's do a couple problems, and let's see that you... Uh, make sure that you know what we're looking at. So this example, how large a sample is necessary? So we know we're finding n. We want to estimate the mean GPA of each undergraduate class at a large university within 0.25 at the 99% confidence level. Population standard deviation is 1.2. So I'm just going to start thinking about my formula. It's n equals, right? I need to know my z of alpha over 2. I need to know my sigma and I need to know my margin of error. So Z, that's a little bit of work. Remember, it says that I want to be 99% confident, so my alpha is equal to 1%, right, or 0.01. So my alpha over 2 is equal to 0 0.0050. I go to the 0050 because, remember, we have to jump into our Z table and look that one up. When I search on the 0050, or on the inside the table for 0050, I am in between two values. I'm in between 2.57 and 2.58. I'm going to go up to the 2.58. And I'm just using a positive value here. Remember, it's symmetric. Negative 2.58, positive 2.8, 2.58. Population standard deviation is 1.2. And margin of error, that's the new thing that we're looking for. However, You've got yourself a little key word, within. We want to be within 0.25. That is our margin of error. That's how much plus or minus we can do, which is exactly what margin of error is, right? We can be plus 0.25 or minus 0.25. In our confidence interval, remember, margin of error is what we add and subtract. So I'm going to go to my formula. N is equal to, remember, it's a giant squared at the end. And I've got my z, so 2.58 times my sigma, which is 1.2, divide by that margin of error. So go to your calculator, make sure that you get the same value. I got approximately 
153.36, blah, 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 blah. 153. Double check, tell me if I'm wrong. I cannot have 153.36 for a sample size, right? So always round up. So my final answer is going to be I need a sample size of 154 students in order to be 99% confident about that margin of error. So 154. So no problem, we got that. Seems easy. Identify your stuff first because then you don't have to be confusing yourself and looking for it. So let's talk about this automobile theft. I don't think that we need to do them both, but I do want to compare them. So a sociologist wants to estimate the average number of car thefts in a large city per day within two cars. He wants to be 99% confident. And from a previous study, sigma equals 4.2. How many days should he select to study? Well, days, how many days is my sample size? Because it says he wants the num average number of car, th car thefts per day. So I know I'm looking for n sample size. So my z, my sigma, and my margin of error. Well, my Z, it's 99% confident, right? Didn't we just do this one? My alpha was 1, so alpha over 2 is 0.05. I'm pretty sure that came out to a 2.58. My sigma, it tells me, is 4.2. My margin of error, I see the word within here, within two cars. So my margin of error is going to be 2. So I can go ahead and I can calculate that all out. Well, Letter B is really the difference that, or the situation that I want to talk about. How many days should he select? So what's my N if he wants to be 95% confident? So my Z is going to change, right? My sigma is still 4.2. My margin of error is still 2. But now my Z changes. I use a different Z value in here. So if I'm talking about 95% confident, my alpha is equal to 5% confident, or 0.05. So my alpha over 2 is 0 0.0250. So when I look that one up, I'm pretty sure that one comes out exact. I think that's a 1.96 for my Z. Little note to self, whenever we're doing these problems, if you just want to write down a list of all of your Z values, like 99% confident means my Z value is going to be 2.58. 95 means it's going to be 1.96. So when we do this, then, we're just going to use a 1.96 for the second problem for part B. So N is equal to science squared. So my Z value, 1.96 times my standard deviation, divide by my margin of error. Don't forget to square at the end. So n should be equal to sample size. I believe it comes out to 17 days after I round up. That's it for section 7.1b, finding sample size. Please don't forget how to find a confidence interval. The margin of error is what we've got in, um, in common between those two sections. So thanks for sticking around. I will see you next time.